Hi, this is Dr. Susan Brown, Director of the Center for Better Bones. A pleasure to be with you here today. Today I want to share with you some information, some updated information about a really important bone nutrient, and that nutrient is vitamin D. This time of year, I think of vitamin D because here in New York, we're in to mid-May, to early May, and that's just the time of the year when the sun starts coming out, when we're going to have more exposure to vitamin D, when we're coming from that winter vitamin D drought, it's the perfect time to measure your vitamin D level because your level is going to be quite low, perhaps the lowest of all the year. So I always like to get an early spring, late winter vitamin D. Vitamin D is such an important nutrient for bone health. In fact, I've heard major bone researchers like Robert Heaney, who spent his life studying calcium, I've heard him say on a stage to thousands of people, I really am sorry that I spent so much time encouraging people to take calcium and not studying vitamin D. He said you can actually swim in an ocean of calcium and not absorb it unless you have enough vitamin D. We now know that vitamin D is essential for calcium absorption. And in fact, I've done many studies on vitamin D, looking at many studies, written several reports, and it's my analysis here at the Center for Better Bones that you can reduce fracture by 50% if you have adequate vitamin D levels. And we'll get to talk about what that adequate level is. Actually, and there's been several studies showing similar things, like this data by Bess Dawson Hughes showing that they just gave simple vitamin D supplementation in Boston and reduced fracture by 50% non-vertebral fractures. On the Better Bones website, we actually have a document discussing all of these studies, nursing home studies, showing just 800 units of vitamin D reduced fractures substantially. Even with osteopenia, they've been able to, if a woman is deficient in vitamin D, give her vitamin D and correct that osteopenia. So that's why I'm saying it's a great time to get tested. And I want to remind you that vitamin D is not only important to bone, but it's also important to every aspect of health practically. They now find that 22 types of cancer are related to vitamin D and that if you optimize your level of vitamin D, you're less likely to be developing that cancer, less likely to have remissions, and better likely to have a better outcome if you have that vitamin D. That vitamin D research on cancer is really fascinating because the woman who began all that was Carol, Carol Beggarly. She was a woman that I've known for many years. When she retired as a successful business person, she developed breast cancer. And her son said to her, you know, mom, I've been reading research on how vitamin D can affect breast cancer. She went on to go to some of these professional meetings, this was a few decades ago, with all these leaders where they were reporting the early research on the link between vitamin D and cancer. And at one point, she said she grabbed that very expensive microphone and said, how come you never tell the public this? And their answer was, well, you know, we don't have enough double-blind studies. But afterwards, several key vitamin D researchers came up to her and said, you know, we have sympathy with you. We'll help you teach the public. And they developed an amazing project called Grassroots Health. And the website is grassroots, grassrootshealth.net. And they have wonderful data, wonderful studies, many videos on vitamin D. And they have produced, for example, this really very fascinating chart that you might actually be thinking of. This chart actually shows how much disease, <laughs> it's funny to place, okay, it's, look up this chart on grassrootshealth.net. This chart is going to tell you how much vitamin, if you have adequate vitamin D, how much you can reduce 22 types of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, many autoimmune diseases. They have endless information. They've done research on pregnancy showing that the 80% of all Caucasian women and 100% of Afro-American women are vitamin D deficient and their children are vitamin D deficient. And this affects everything from diabetes to heart disease of these kids in the long term and the short term. So if you have questions about vitamin D, you can look on our website, go to grassrootshealth.net, get your vitamin D tested.
so that's my message for this week. Um, I think it's a very important one. Let's take a second, let's kind of assimilate that data on vitamin D and now see what questions you might have about vitamin D. We'll take a minute to get your questions in. And, and, and I want to report to you one of the most commonly asked question we get about vitamin D as we start here today. And that question is, well, if you say vitamin D is so very important, how much vitamin D do I need? How much vitamin D is actually appropriate for me to take? And the answer there, of course, depends on your individual biochemistry. It's important to remember that vitamin D is really not so much a vitamin as it is a pro-hormone. Our bodies take vitamin D and produce it into a hormone. That hormone affects every tissue in the body. Some people have more receptors for that hormone. Some people have more need for that hormone. For example, if you're very heavy, you seem to store that vitamin D in fat tissues and you need higher levels. Other people seem to have a genetic predisposition where they don't need so much. So if I'm telling you that the ideal level of vitamin D is 50 to 60 NG, and we have developed a little chart with this actually. Um, you'll see here 50 to 60 NG. You can find this again in our website. And if you have that optimum level, you stand to receive all the benefits from vitamin D. So 50 to 60 level. And the average person, surprisingly enough, uses 4,000 units of vitamin D a day. So most people in these climates where we don't have sunlight exposure during the winter months and much of the year really need to take 4,000, 5,000 units a day. Personally, in my case, I have to take 5,000 units in the summer to have near that 50 level and about 6,000 in the winter. So the easiest thing to say is we use 4,000. The government has said 4,000 is safe for everybody, but I have seen clients who did okay on 2,000. They still got that 50 NG level. So I'm suggesting that you go get your vitamin D tested. Yes. If you have any trouble getting it tested, you can find information on that in our website. Get it tested, reach a 50 to 60 level. We have a question from Patricia. If your vitamin D and calcium is normal, can you still develop osteoporosis? Yeah, so here's an interesting question that Patricia asked. If your vitamin D and calcium is normal, can you still develop osteoporosis? And the answer, of course, is yes. Vitamin D you can test and you can know what's normal. That's a great start. Calcium is trickier because the body is always going to sacrifice bone to put calcium in the blood if the body needs calcium in the blood. So you can't rely on just your calcium and vitamin D levels. And it's important to remember that there are many nutrients essential for bone health. We talk about the 20 key bone building nutrients and you can find all sorts of discussions of that on my website. Boron, zinc, manganese, copper, any one of these that is low can affect osteoporosis. It's important to have an alkaline diet because the average person loses maybe half of their bone mass as they age, as they go into old age from, from chronic low grade metabolic acidosis, from being too acid. But even more important, there are many drugs and medications that cause osteoporosis, like antidepressants, anti-acid drugs, prednisone. 20% of all osteoporosis is caused by the use of steroids, prednisone. And no matter how nice your calcium and your vitamin D is, if you're using these drugs that damage bone, that is going to cause bone loss. There's also many medical causes of bone loss, like parathyroid problems, or even more common, a loss of calcium in the urine. Clients that come to me, and when we evaluate and say, this is a strange case, this person shouldn't be losing so much bone, they're losing more than the average person would lose at that life stage, then we say, we better do a workup and see what the causes behind this osteoporosis might be. And we have a very wonderful document called the Medical Osteoporosis Workup. You can find on our website or call our office and we'll get it to you. So osteoporosis is complicated. Pat, Tricia, a good start. A good start is adequate D and, and really making sure the calcium is nice. 
1200 milligrams between diet and supplements both together but calcium and vitamin D is not the end of the story there's another question from Rosemary oh. she says someone she knew mm -hmm. a 70 year old broke a bone in her foot and was told to take five 50,000 units of D can you comment right right I see Rosemary here talks about being 70 years old which it's great age Rosemary enjoy it and that Rosemary broke a bone in the foot and was told to take 5,000 units of vitamin D. So what happens there is I presume that Rosemary was tested for vitamin D and they found her to be deficient. Usually when they give you 50,000 units, they tell you to take it once a week. And that's the equivalent of 7,000 units a day. Remember I told you the average person uses 4,000 units when you're deficient, they say we have to take a lot more than that 4,000, so we're going to give you 7,000 a day. And then usually they give you that for two months and then they retest. So that is a fine thing to do. Personally, at the Center for Better Bones, I prefer to take 7,000 units a day and I prefer to use natural D3. Many times the medication of the 50,000 units of vitamin D that they give you is D2, which is a synthetic. It's okay, but it's not as good as the D3. The other thing I would say, Rosemary, keep in mind that you want to maintain adequate vitamin D forever. So if your doctor says, well, take this for two months, be sure to go back, be retested, and see just how much vitamin D you need every day, both through the summer and the winter, to maintain that adequate 50 NG level. Most cases where people need 50,000, they need at least 5,000 a day ever after. The wonderful thing about vitamin D is you can be tested. It's not expensive. But I am so surprised at how many people say, oh, yeah, the doctor put me on 50,000 units, which means you're very deficient. And uh, I did it for a few months, and then I stopped. You're going to end up deficient right again. So you need to monitor that vitamin D, keep on an adequate level. And you'll learn what kind of dose you need in the summer and the winter. But uh, Rosemary, you let me know, but I'm betting you're going to need at least 5,000. So a question from Jacqueline. What other vitamins and minerals should I be taking to help my body absorb and use vitamins? Yeah, yeah. I see there's a question here from Jacqueline about what other vitamins and minerals should I be taking to help my body absorb and use vitamin D. The vitamin D absorption, interestingly enough, is enhanced if you take it with food, particularly a fatty food. It's a fat-soluble nutrient, so I would, one, take my vitamin D with the meals. That really helps. I think it's far superior to take the vitamin D every day instead of taking huge doses once a week if you have a choice. Now, we know for the vitamin D and calcium to work for bone, you need many more nutrients. The first nutrient that pops to mind is magnesium. And in, in, in the upcoming weeks, I'm going to be talking to you about a new study on magnesium that showed actually they took nursing home people, they looked at their magnesium level, and the people with the highest magnesium did not fracture. But what they found out was they needed to use supplemental magnesium. They couldn't get enough in the diet. We now know that magnesium is very important to protect bone. It should be used in supplemental doses. In Israel, they gave women 1,000 milligrams of magnesium in alkalizing form, and these women fractured much, much less. So magnesium is important. So we know the minerals, calcium, magnesium. We, we also know other some trace minerals like zinc, boron, copper. They're important not so much because they make the bulk of bone, but because they help the protein matrix become strong. Bone is like a sponge made of protein upon which the mineral crystals sit. So you want to have that protein sponge to be strong. That's what gives you flexibility to bone, the collagen. So I would suggest, Jacqueline, that you look at all the 20 key bone nutrients. Of course, in the Better Bones Builder product, we put together all the key bone nutrients into one single formula. You have to take many tablets a day because to get all those nutrients, you need many tablets. But our best chance with bone is if we give the body all the nutrients, all the 20 key bone nutrients plus that are necessary to repair and maintain bone. I see, um, let's see, there is one other question that I'm frequently asked that I just want to include here today, and that is 
can vitamin D be toxic? And the ALA question, are there some people that should not use vitamin D? Let me just say that you can certainly take too much vitamin D. It's rare, but you could do it. I think the, the least amount they've ever seen toxicity with is 40,000 a day for several months. And that is really, that has really not been duplicated. It's generally much more than that. But with vitamin D, it's easy because all you have to do is get tested. So if your levels get to be 70, 80, that's generally okay. But if they get to be a 90, 100, then we know that level's too high. You should cut down on the vitamin D. I certainly keep my clients at a 50, maybe 60 level. The other issue of who should not use vitamin D is interesting, and there are rare circumstances where people have certain diseases like sarcoidosis, certain diseases that actually their body produces too much vitamin D, too much of the active hormone of vitamin D. So if you have sarcoidosis or other diseases like that, you, you certainly want to work with a doctor supervision when you use vitamin D. It's not because you're taking too much vitamin D it's a problem, but because the body is producing too much vitamin D in those rare situations of autoimmune, certain diseases like sarcoidosis. It's a very small segment of diseases, but it's important to keep in mind. Great. So it's been a pleasure to be here. I hope you will all consider carefully your vitamin D level. Now's the spring. Now's the time to look into it. Enjoy the summer, uh, get, get, you know, maybe 20 minutes of sunshine. We never want to get burned. We want to get out there in the midday sun for maybe 20 minutes. Otherwise, protect yourself from the sun. And have a great summer. We'll talk soon. This is Susan Brown at the Center for Better Bones.